My name is Kyle Knapp, and today I'll be talking about upgrading to CRM 2013, more specifically how to prepare for it. So we're going to cover a couple topics. The compatibility of your platform, you know, what you can install 2013 on, how to prep your current or old system for the upgrade, the paths for your upgrade, some tasks after it happens, and then I'll briefly walk through an example upgrade. So, you should know that Serum 2013 is, as the newest version, it's losing compatibility with some old Microsoft products. Specifically, you won't be able to access it uh, from Windows XP or any Outlook client and web app on Windows XP. So that's Outlook 2003. Ten year difference between the products, so they're just not supporting them. Uh, similarly, IE7, depending on Windows XP, won't work. And you can't run your email router on Exchange Server 2003. You also cannot run it using the WebDAV protocol of Exchange Server 2007. You should note that Exchange 2007 Web Services is still a supported protocol for your CRM email route. But while you're losing support there, you're adding support for Microsoft's latest and greatest, which is Exchange Server 2013 and MS Outlook and Office 2013, as well as when you install on Windows Server 2012 R2, you'll get ADFS 2.2 that just ships with it. Also, CRM 2013 is compatible with all major web browsers. Uh, these are all net new additions for Dynamics CRM. So, CRM 2011, you know, it's not compatible on all web browsers and doesn't support these newest ones, but CRM 2013 does. So when you install 2013, this is the system that you need to install it on either Server 2012 or 2008 R2 SP1 with any of those supported additions or versions on the right column. Your Active Directory functional level needs to be 2003, 8, or 12 in RAM or native. And then your SQL Server installation can be as early as 2008 R2 SP2. And that goes the same for SSRS, the SSRS um, reporting extension component. So now that you know your kind of old system, we're going to talk about how to prep your current system for that task. There's two main components to the prep. You need to replace legacy CRM 4.0 code, and you need to apply CRM rollups to your environment. There's a lot to that first one, so we're going to break that down. In CRM 4.0, they had a entirely different model for writing your customizations, whether it be plugins or JavaScript that ran when you opened a form. Specifically, your plugins or workflow activities will probably need to be rewritten in the new CRM model. In the JavaScript, you no longer support global functions or form objects that were the common practice for doing it in CRM 4.0 and were still supported in CRM 2011. If you hosted a custom web application in the ISV folder of your CRM directory, you can no longer do that. And if you have any third-party solutions um, for CRM, unless they have a, an updated version, they won't work in the upgrade. So how can we find all of these customizations? Where can we find the code? If you're coming from CRM 2011, two tools you can run to search it out for you. The custom code validation tool checks your web resource files for any legacy JavaScript and it will highlight them in red for you. It won't rewrite it, but it will point you out where to go. And the legacy feature check tool does a similar action on all of your server extensions and plugins. It looks for legacy code that's no longer supported. Here's the two links to go to that. This PowerPoint is available after the presentation so you can take the links with you or you can screenshot it now. Once you find your code, how can you resolve it or replace it? For a plugin, you may be able to replace it with out-of-the-box functionality. You should note that when CRM 2011 came out, it was full of new feature requests from CRM 4. And similarly, CRM 2013 is full of new feature requests from 2011. So after two generations of the product, what had to be custom before is could be out of the box now. And if it's not, you'll have to rewrite it with a supported CRM code. Same goes for JavaScript. In CRM 2013, we have what's called business rules, which are 
a user-friendly way of programming your forms. And I think Kanika showed that in a previous presentation on what's new in CRM 2013. But those can often replace what used to require JavaScript. And they're still kind of in their first generation of those business rules. So if it's not supported yet, it may be supported in a new rollup. But until then, you'll have to rewrite your JavaScript with an XRM model code. And the XRM model was already standard in 2011. So any 2011 JavaScript will work for 2013. If you have custom workflow activities, they might be able to be replaced with out-of-the-box functionality that CRM builds in, or you'll have to rewrite them. With web service callouts in your custom code, similar story. But if you can't replace them with out-of-the-box functionality, you have to instead reference the 2013 web service APIs in your code. If you had a custom web application that was nested in the ISV folder back in CRM, you now need to move that to its own IIS website, and they'll have to talk from their own websites instead of referencing each other from one directory. And if you have third-party solutions, you should follow their documentation. Sometimes the documentation may say you have to uninstall and reinstall. Sometimes the normal upgrade is supported without any action on your part. So outside of the concept of any customizations, your stock CRM system also has to be at a, at a current supported rollup for upgrade. If you're coming directly from CRM 2011 to 2013, you need to be at least at update rollup 14. So a production CRM 2011 environment needs to be at least 14 before it'll upgrade. But if you're coming from CRM 4.0, you need to have that on the latest update rollup, which is 21. And then you can hop through CRM 2011 on update rollup 6. So you don't need to go to 14 if you're just doing a hop through. I'll explain a little bit about that more later. Once you have all that ready, you can assess your upgrade paths. So there are two paths. You can either do a migration upgrade or an in-place upgrade. With a migration upgrade, it's exactly what it sounds like. You're moving your old databases to your new environment, and CRM does a database upgrade for you. In an in-place, you're going to upgrade both the databases and the application at their current location. And these have some setbacks and pluses for each scenario. In a migration upgrade, which is recommended, because you're moving to a completely new environment with new hardware and an installation, you always have the option to roll back to your current production environment. And because you're moving to a separate one, you can minimize the downtime on production. This also provides a path to go from CRM 4.0 to 2013 via CRM 2011. The downside is this requires additional hardware. You have to have separate SQL and application servers up ready to handle the new environment or environments if you're doing a hop through 2011. And those can be virtual machines. For an in-place upgrade, it is the easiest and simplest path, but you're putting a lot of trust in the hands of Microsoft at that point. The trust that you know, their program is going to do it right and that all of your customizations, if any, will not break it. If your customizations do break it and the upgrade fails, that will require a reinstallation of your production environment. That's why we always, if you're doing an in-place upgrade, recommend taking backups before you do anything at all. And then when you do the in-place, if it fails, you can always roll back to that. But also, even though you're not having to provide existing or additional hardware and software, your existing hardware must already meet those minimum requirements. And if you're coming from CRM 2011, it probably doesn't already meet the minimum requirements for 2013. So considering those two paths, let's say you've completed an upgrade, whether you do migration or in place, there's some tasks after the upgrade that need to happen. You have to upgrade your peripheral CRM components. So that's your email router, your email router and your Outlook clients. In your email router, there is an in-place upgrade option there as well. And whether you do in-place or migration for that, all you need to do is mimic the settings of your previous email router, barring any changes in your Exchange Server installation. If Exchange Server is still the same, you can set everything up the same, just with new versions of the software. And for CRM for Outlook, the CRM 2011 Outlook client works with 2013 but it won't support offline capabilities. 
So you could leave it be if all your users are on desktops, but if they ever need to take it offline, it won't work. The upgrade process for that is as simple as allowing it to come through in a Microsoft update or just uninstalling the 2011 client and installing the 2013 client on your user's computers. The second component, uh, the second task after an upgrade is to update your custom forms. In 2011, you probably had a lot of custom forms, but in 2013, the look and feel has changed a lot. So they go ahead and give you this inactive, out of the box form for every entity. For example, the screenshot here, you have an updated default form. And then you have your information form, which is your custom form from your previous installation. So what you ought to do if you want to leverage CRM's new and improved interface is upgrading. So you want to open the inactive account form. In this, in this example, it's not an account. Open the inactive account form and bring in the 2011 information form and it'll spit it right up for you and you can take advantage of everything it has to offer. The final task that would have to happen after an upgrade that you really need to allot time for is the deferred extension table merge. Going from 2011 to 2013, they, Microsoft really changed the schema so that it takes advantage of a lot of SQL improvements and part of that is they're no longer splitting up your base entity tables from your custom entity tables. So it used to be, for example, account base and account extension. Now it's all just in one account table. To fix kind of your old database into your new one, this is something that runs automatically in the upgrade. But you can defer it if you think your organization is going to be over 15 gigs. Because this is the step of the upgrade that takes the longest once you start to run it. So if you want to minimize your production downtime, you can defer this merge and then do the entities piecemeal after the fact so that your users can be up and running in the new environment. Microsoft has a lot of steps. It's kind of a lengthy step process that Microsoft published to handle this, but at least they did so that you're not sitting in front of the computer for hours waiting for it to happen. So with those tasks covered, let's check on an example upgrade. Consider going from 2011 to 2013. These are the tasks you'd have to complete. In 2011, you'll remove any third-party products that are not supported. Or if they are supported, you need to install their updated versions in 2013. You need to remove your 4.0 code from 2011 and update to roll up 14. Then after the upgrade, you need to merge your forms. If you're coming from CRM 4.0 to 2013, you should probably remove your third-party products from 4.0 and updated to 21. Then in that interim hop, you can remove any 4.0 legacy code. That's because 2011 and 2013 have a similar customization model with plugins and solutions. Serum 4 didn't have any solution model. But in 2011, you can easily identify the legacy code using the tools I mentioned and then remove it before your upgrade to 2013. And finally, in 2013, you can install any updated third-party products if they exist. So regardless of that's in place or migration, your roadmap will look like this. The first step is going to be this red rectangle. The upgrade of your database, server, and solutions would all happen when you import it into your 2013 environment. And then once it's in, you'd upgrade the forms. In a related note, you can reference Kanika's video on what's new in Serum 2013. This page is Microsoft's system requirements page for all for Serum 2013 on Windows Server. And then for identifying any of your legacy code, you can reference their PDF guide for preparing for the upgrade. You can always email me at that email address there. You can find this webinar posted at dynamicscare.com. And thanks for joining.